So, the first thing that we have to do before we start freaking out about the network is understand what different kind of networks that we have. First and foremost, there are the inner networks. These are the people that we already know, but who may not realize what we do in our job, what we're looking for, or the fact that we're even looking for a job at all. Then, on the other end, we have the outer networks. Outer networks are people you don't know. We need to have equal contact with some of both of them. But in the outer networks, it tends to be a little bit more about volume. Your inner networks are all about how do people know you. So, the very first of the inner networks is our tight circle, our champions. These are the people who love us and want us to succeed. It's our significant others, it's our parents, it's our children, it's our best friends. These are the ones who see us suffer in our job search every day. They're the ones who are really, really pulling for us. They really, really want us to succeed. So, a lot of times your inner network doesn't know how they can help you. That's where you have to remind them. Remind them, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I want to do. Does your company know of anything going on? One of the things that happens is that our own inner network doesn't realize their own value. Take, for example, my husband, Ryan. He works over at John's Van Hill. And I was explaining to him that he is a valuable networking connection to me. And he's all like, how can I be a valuable network connection to you? I work in the customer advocate. He's in very high level customer service. He goes, I don't know anybody over in the HR department. And I go, well, Ryan, you know who your boss is, right? He goes, well, of course. I go, and you know her email address, right? He goes, well, yeah, of course, I email her all the time. I go, okay. Now, do you know who her boss is? He said, well, yeah, of course, it's so-and-so. I go, and do you know who his boss is? He goes, Donna, of course, I know who all these people are. I go, Ryan, don't you see the value of that? If I wanted to get into a management role at John's Manville, it's not just going to come through applying at the HR department. I need to have contacts with the hiring managers in any given company. The fact he knows their names and their email addresses and sometimes even their direct phone numbers, depending on the layer that is in a big company, that's hard information to find. That's some way how your inner network can help you, even if they don't think they can help you. Frank, you had a question. Well, no, I was just going to make a comment. And, and having that person in the company and, and, and live with them to the person who's above them, they can give a recommendation for them about you, and they can in turn pass it on. Right, right. And so that's part of what we need to remind our inner networks. How can they help us? Who do you know? Can you make it easier for me to talk to somebody else? Because, let's face it, we all feel better about sending an email or calling somebody when we feel we have some sort of connection with that person already, right? Would you agree with that? It's a lot easier to call somebody. That's the same thing that you need to create when you're talking about building on your network. So those are your, your innermost circles, your champions. The next layer is your light connections. These are people who know you but they may not really realize what you do, or it's a connection further from the past. So this could be uh, past co-workers. It could be your outlying relatives, such as nieces and nephews, aunts, uncles, these kinds of things. I know it sounds weird at, at filling up on the, the relatives, but if they're here in town and in various industries, you need to work all the angles, right? I actually got an email from my niece through Facebook. This was about a couple months ago. She was graduating from dental school. She's a dental hygienist now. And she's going, Donna, do you know anything about resumes? Or could you tell me a book about resume writing? <laughs> Becky, I'm a career coach. She's like, yeah, but do, do you help people with resumes? <laughs> it's like, yes, Becky. Yes, I do. This is Gloria. But that's a full case of just because you take for granted what you do and you think everybody around you knows what you do, they don't know what you do. You need to let your rest of your network know what you're doing, what you're looking for, and where you're looking for it. 
Like I said, Aunt Martha wants to help you. She wants to forward that job she saw on Craigslist. But if she doesn't understand what you do professionally, how can she make that recommendation? How can she forward that job lead? That's where your light connections and your internet networks start making sense. Now, there's an important strategy with your light network. You need to tap them on the shoulder at least once a month. Maybe twice a month. This also includes your LinkedIn connections, your social media outlets, all the rest of the people who lightly know you. And uh, I see some people send out an email to their entire um, LinkedIn list about once every couple of months as a reminder of, hey, I'm really excited. This is what happened in my life so far. By the way, I'm still looking for this kind of position. If anybody knows of these kinds of opportunities, please let me know. Here's my strengths. And then you build on it from there. Make sense? Okay. So, moving on to your outer networks. The outer networks are broken down into two types. There's the quality time, and then there's the volume. Quality time on your outer network includes anything like what you're at today. It's the job search groups, right? You get to meet a bunch of people you didn't know, and we're here having some quality time together. And we're even going to have some open networking time after we're done with the presentation, so you get to practice. That's quality time. Another example would be professional associations. Frank mentioned early on about the professional associations. Those can definitely be a real resource. That is part of that outer network, people you don't know yet, but people who will help you later on. Um, Neato groups, LinkedIn groups, social media. Notice this is not your LinkedIn connections. Once LinkedIn becomes a connection, that person is a light inner network. Then if you start developing in closer online relationships, they can move further into the circle. But once they're connected, they're part of your inner network. That means they get the inner network strategies. If you're part of a LinkedIn group, that's outer people you don't know yet. Now, how many people are familiar with the LinkedIn groups? Great. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. So, when you get into your groups, what kind of activities are you doing in your groups right now? Yes, Greg. Well, I'm, the Jeff group has a, what they call the experienced workers group or the room or job club. Mm -hmm. So they're having discussions, there's certain people, uh, we have one fellow who is uh, an HR expert and he he'll, he'll send, send uh, uh, job postings or, or job leads. Okay. Uh, different things. All right. And, and of course, we also update you know, you know, you know, I went to this event and so, so on. So we do that. Okay, great. Uh, Monica, you had some ideas? Yeah, I pay attention to um, the people who have been most active on discussion groups. But lately, I've been, if I see a company and I want to um, apply, I follow them on LinkedIn, and then I look to see if there are any connections through my connection at that company. Right. So, for instance, like CSU alumni, or maybe you'll have a connection through another group. So then I contact them and say, hey, what do you know about this mm -hmm. job? Can I call you and ask you questions? That kind of thing. Right. Exactly. So there's reaching out directly to the contacts there. Uh, how many people are posting news and interesting articles? Right, we're sharing the information with other people in the group. How about commenting on articles? Mm, yeah. Some of that, you know, you know, different discussion topics, these kinds of things. Obviously, there's posting job leads and responding to them. That's what everybody seems to know. <laughs> you know at least uh, that's what you're hoping to find there. So, the main thing with the activity that you're doing in the groups is think of it as trying to build relationships. How do you start to build a relationship? Do you start by asking for something? Or do you start by offering something? That's what you want to do to the other people in the groups, is you want to be a resource to these other people in the groups so that they ask you to connect with them. This will help build your online reputation, get your numbers up and your contacts, and then when you do reach out more aggressively to some of the contacts at your target companies, they can look back on your recent 
posts and what you've done in your groups, and you go, oh yes, I would like to join with Monica. She's not just being some creepy stalker. She seems to know something about what she's talking about. That's, that's, that's the thing. When you reach out to somebody, you don't want to be the creepy stalker. You must have something to offer. 